Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Professors of Profit vlogcast. I'm your host, Dr. F. Scott Feel, and I've got with me today Dr. Philip McGee, who is actually doing something kind of cool, uh, still within the realm of healthcare and physical therapy related, uh, but he's kind of got one foot in the boat, one foot out. It's certainly not clinical anymore, which is kind of cool. Um, Philip, tell us a little bit about what it is that you do now and how you kind of got into that situation. Yeah, well, first, thanks for having me on, and uh, I'm really excited to talk about utilization review. So utilization review, it's a pretty broad term to explain that you're looking at uh, members' charts and you're determining whether or not uh, what needs to be provided. So in my case, I am a pre-service coordinator for Navi Health. And Navi Health, they manage a lot of the different managed Medicare plans. So I help to synthesize the information for the medical directors on whether or not someone is appropriate for inpatient rehab. And Medicare has pretty strict guidelines under chapter one. And so I look at the clinical information that's sent and I look and see what that member is doing, what their diagnoses are, and then send it to the medical director, make phone calls, and let uh, facilities know whether or not that member is appropriate. Yeah, it's pretty cool that uh, they have a physical therapist in that position, because I could see a non-physical therapist in that position not exactly understanding what what how it works, uh, being almost like the enemy, right? It's like... Uh, Yikes, you don't want some pencil pusher in Ohio determining your plan of care and how many you know, visits they should get when they've never treated a patient in their life. So it's nice to see them using somebody who knows the field. Um, but why should people, you know, whether it be clinicians who are just burnt out or you know, professors who are looking for maybe some uh, side gigs or you know, uh, people who are just looking to change things up, uh, maybe getting out of the clinical world, why should they look into utilization review? What are some of the pros that you're seeing in that field? Yeah, great question. So the thing that really led me into it is that I wanted to have a better work-life balance. As a father and a husband, uh, I wanted to be able to spend more time with my family and not have that time blend in uh, with work and family. So I was doing home health prior to this. I had been doing home health for seven years. and as you know, and many others know, a lot of time you're documenting once you're at home and it's hard to separate. Guilty that, is charged. <laughs> that work-life balance, especially when you have start of cares. So uh, I wanted to be able to have a job that was just a set time. The uh, other thing that's really great about the job is that there's a lot of upward mobility. So as a clinician, a lot of times the problem is that you're basically either a clinician or a supervisor, or maybe you can be in some level of management or you can be a professor, but those seem to be pretty much where you're, you're stuck. And so the great thing about Navi Health and, and other companies that there are a lot of physical therapists that are upper, upper level managers, that there's different areas for learning and development, or other areas like doing appeals and denials. And so just to be able to have so much more flexibility with what I can do with my license, uh, that's uh, what makes it great. I'd, I'd point out a third thing is that my job is 100% remote. And I've never had a job that was 100% remote. And it's wonderful. I see my family. Uh, every few hours, I get to have lunch with them, which I had never had before. And so it's it's great to be able to just stay at home. Yeah, man, you got me beat. I, I teach, you know, uh, for University of St. Augustine there, and uh, I'm in the Flex program. So it's 80 to 90% remote, uh, but we're on campus uh, every other weekend or so for labs. So yeah, you're, you're, you're doing it right. That's for sure. Um, okay. It's nice to, to have those remote jobs. Um, tell, tell my audience a little bit about 
some tips and tricks, some golden nuggets that you've taken uh, in your time there with uh, Navi Health and the you know non clinical job. Tell tell us a little bit about things you've learned, uh, like if they're looking to get started in it, or you know it seems like it's pretty competitive. So like I would love to hear what you've learned over the the years, or you know being an expert in the field so to speak. Uh, love to hear some tips and tricks and pointers from somebody who's doing it. Yeah, I love to share that. So. It is very competitive. I would say there are a lot of people that spend months uh, applying and submitting applications. So what I would say the most important thing is to be able to have a good non-clinical resume. And I know myself and I know that others reviewing other people's resumes, as clinicians, we're not really taught how to write a non-clinical resume. And uh, fortunately, after submitting about 18 applications, I changed my resume. I learned from a lot of the mistakes that I was making. And then once I submitted my new resume, I got an interview. And uh, from that interview, I was able to get a second interview and then get a job offer. Fortunately, from me learning that, I have helped five other people so far uh, in the past two months get jobs with Navi Health. And a lot of it is teaching them what they need to do to fix their resume, being able to teach them tips on how to interview well. And those are really the, the two key things in order to just get your foot in the door. So what I've done is that I created a free ebook. It's on my website. And I also have a Facebook group. So the website and the Facebook group, it's called Non-Clinical Career Guide. And there's, a, it's all one word, Merriam-Webster, they say non-clinical has no dash. So it's uh, non-clinical, all one word, career guide. And uh, you can get the free ebook. It talks about the top 10 errors that I've seen in reviewing resumes and even just my own experience. So it's a book about making sure that you write a resume that gets interviews. And so that would be the most important thing because otherwise you're just going to spend hours submitting applications, not hearing back anything, or you end up getting an auto reject email a few days later saying, we're sorry, we haven't selected you. Yeah, you bring up a lot of great points there. And, uh, you know, I want to kind of review a couple of these here, but one, it's great, again, to see physical therapists getting a place at the table, you know, in a lot of these administrative or, you know, non-clinical positions. Um, I think that's awesome. I just heard the other day of a CEO of a hospital that's a, a, a PT. So I want to I want to get them on the show eventually oh, wow. and interview them. Uh, you know, that's the first I'd heard yeah, of that. Awesome. So I'm pretty pumped to hear that. But two, I think, you know, it's a huge distinction that you make having a good non-clinical resume, right? It was the same thing for me. Like I'd never written a CV before. And here I am 15 years of experience, you know, in the working world as a clinician. And now I'm having to transition into academia. And instead of handing them my resume, I have to hand a CV. And I don't know what a CV is. So I'm like, all right, well, let's take a look at some of these. Right. And I looked at people like, you know, uh, John Childs and, and Todd mm -hmm. Davenport and mm -hmm. you know those guys uh, their CVs were 35 pages and it took me two days wow. to get through them you know so okay. it, it was a shock to me how big of a career change that was but you really had to demonstrate why you were a good teacher and educator not the clinical mm -hmm. skills that you had even though Capti wants me to have those experiential skills yep. to teach and I think with the EDD, that kind of helped me with that portion. And then the five years in the last, well, last five years, specifically at skilled nursing facilities and home health, uh, that kind of helped with my content that I was teaching and my levels of expertise there. So, you know, like I said, I think that's a huge distinction is you've got to show them the skills that they're looking for uh, in their language, in their format. So, you know, even if it's a complete redo a tear down and redo of your resume sometimes mm -hmm. that's what you need to do you know for me like yeah. I said I needed to learn how to write a CV so that yeah. that was a, a drastic change for me as well you know mm -hmm. well I can't thank you enough for coming on and for just kind of telling us uh, a, a little bit about a non-clinical avenue and a non-clinical option Philip uh, where can people find you online if they want to follow up have other questions for you or you know 
want to reach out to you and just ask ask what you're up to these days. Yeah, so the main ways on Facebook, there is a growing group that's the non-clinical career guide. So just search non-clinical career guide and you'll see that with the green logo. And then the website is also nonclinicalcareerguide.com. And on that, you can uh, read my blog. I've started a blog and the goal is to start a YouTube channel and uh, start a, a course to try to help people know how to apply and then uh, thrive in their job as a utilization reviewer or um, in the future, other non-clinical jobs. Awesome, man. Yeah, no, I can't thank you enough. We'll put those links in the show notes here uh, so people can access them easily enough. Philip, thank you so much for your time, man. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. And uh, I'm sure my audience will benefit from this, especially a lot of those burned out clinicians that are looking to exit the clinical world, uh, Mm -hmm. going non-clinical and still utilizing your skills is, again, one of the things I kind of try to find in side gigs and side hustles, something where I can keep one foot in the boat of uh, my clinical degrees or even my EDD, uh, but still, you know, learn new skills, express other things and and really push the envelope for what we can do and, 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 you know, I think that PT is really just the tip of our iceberg. I say that time and time again. So we got to open people's eyes to the fact that these things are out there. These opportunities are out there. They just need to think outside the box a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much for your time, man. I appreciate you. Thank you. I, I really appreciate it.